It's a beautiful day in Boston. Certainly a good sign after a couple of cold, rainy days. The Red Sox and Oakland A's play game three of a three-game series. Hi again, everybody. I'm Don Orsillo, and welcome to Red Sox Baseball. Well, the Red Sox have not had a great many roster moves so far this season, but lately it seems like there's been more, especially when it comes to the Red Sox pitching staff. And today we found out the Red Sox have added another pitcher. It's old friend Daniel Bard back up from AA Portland. He makes the jump over the Paw Sox to rejoin the Boston Red Sox in the bullpen. Stephen Wright, who made his Major League debut here last night, is optioned back to Pawtucket. A tough night last night in the conditions. Three and two-thirds, he allowed five runs. We welcome in Jerry Remy. And Jerry, today the Red Sox in the rubber game of the three-game series send John Lester to the hill. Well, any time you get beat up like you did last night, the Boston Red Sox, it's always good to have your race going in the following day. And certainly, John Lester has been just that. He and Clay Buckholz have been outstanding all season long. And when you look at Lester's number, right now tied for fourth in the American League with three wins. He is third in ERA at 1.73. Opponents only inning 198 against Lester. And he has not allowed a home run in 26 innings. So he has been right on on top of his game and as I mentioned Don you know when you have a game like you had last night they have so much confidence in John Lester that they're so happy that he's out there the next day that he can shut down the opposition and hopefully the Red Sox can score some runs and win this ball game. He'll be matched up against Brett Anderson it's late afternoon baseball in Boston it's coming your way next. Donuts, Hyundai, Toyota's official site for deals by Toyota.com, and by Southwest Airlines. Well, good afternoon once again, everybody, and welcome back to Boston and Fenway Park as the Red Sox host the Oakland A's in Game 3 of the series as the Red Sox have already taken the field. Let's check out the visiting Oakland A's batting order today, and their order is brought to you by Jordan's Furniture. Coco Chris leads it off in center field with Derek Norris doing the catching and batting second. Seth Smith is hitting 375 away from the Coliseum. Jed Lowry at shortstop bats forward with Josh Donaldson, who's been hot lately. He's at third base. Brandon Moss at first base with Chris Young in right field. Nate Fryman, Wellesley's own, is the DH batting eighth, and Andy Perino is at second base batting ninth. As for the Red Sox, today's starter is brought to you by Verizon Fios. John Lester's fifth start of the year. He is 3 0 with a 1.73 earned run average in 26 innings. He got 23 Ks to only four walks, and opponents hitting under 200 against Lester. The Red Sox defense is brought to you on Nesson by Southwest Airlines. Will Middlebrook, Stephen Drew, Dustin Pedroia, Mike Napoli in the infield. Gomes, Ellsbury, Victorino in the outfield. And David Ross doing the catching. The Red Sox is second league with six errors and 20 games played. Now John Lester ready to work here to Coco Crisp. 
And the first pitch of the ball game is in there for strike one, and we're underway. And the conditions today are terrific, certainly in comparison to what they were last night. As Chris Pitts at 319, five homers and 11 runs batted in. Well, we've got a little baseball weather here this afternoon. Been tough to come by so far in the early going. One one to Crisp is going to miss for ball two. Lester has allowed two runs or less in five of his ten career outings against Oakland. There's two and zero oh in five starts against the A's here at Fenway. Count evens at two and two. Big cut from Coco Chris. Well, so far everything with the exception of one pitch away from Chris who's hitting right-handed. Chris the cross the switch hitter. Fastball away that time. No contact for Coco. Crisp two for eight in the series. Is very protectively getting a piece of that. Stay alive. That's the cut fastball from Lester right there, fooling Coco, but he gets does get a piece of it to foul it off. On deck, Derek Norris, the Oakland A's catcher. Three two again. And that's ball four. He loses Chris, man. First walk given up by John Lester in his outing. Let's send it down to field level in Jenny Dell. Well, Don Bartolo Colon only allowed three hits in last night's 13 to nothing Red Sox loss. John Farrell said it's as sharp as he's seen him all year. And this brings us to our quote of the day brought to you by Geico. And it comes from A's manager Bob Melvin on Colon. He said, that's the perfect guy to have on the mound in games like that. A guy who's going to throw strikes, doesn't let the conditions affect him, and keeps everyone on their toes because they know potentially that ball is going to be in play very quickly. Don, after last night's game, Sox have one of their stars on the mound today. Clearly, John Farrell uh, said that Lester is going to be uh, very important in today's game, ranking third in the AL, 1.73 ERA coming in. Well, certainly very important after a loss like last night. And, yeah, Bob Melman's quite right. He kept the ball in play. He threw all fastballs in last night's game. Just Mr. about all fastballs. A couple of sliders, a couple of change-ups, but basically I'd say 95% fastballs. A lot of contact from the Red Sox, but at people. This is at Middlebrooks at third base to second for one on to first. Around the horn they go for a double play. Grounded into by Derek Norris and very quickly two down. Now a good way to respond to the leadoff walk. That ground ball on one big hop to Middlebrooks. Good feed right there to uh, Pedroia. He can make the throw, get out of the way, and the Red Sox complete the double play. So two down for Seth Smith. Off to a terrific start to begin the year. He's got a home run in the series. Three seventy-seven, two homers and ten runs batted in. Swing and a foul back to the screen for Smith. He is one for four in the series. There's a home run and three runs batted in. So far, he has hit at 6.15 against left-handed pitching. He is 8 for 13 out of the gate against lefties. And dealing with one of the game's best lefties today. As Lester will miss for ball two. Now that explains why Smith is in that three-hole today. When I was making out my lineup card, I was a little bit surprised. But uh, that's the reason why. 6.15, as Don mentioned. Run by Lane, and that is strike two, two and two. Jerry Lane with the plate today. 
Calling the balls and strikes crew chief for this crew as you see Lowry waiting on deck. Oakland with a win last night now just a half game back of the Texas Rangers in the American League West Red Sox have a one game lead atop the American League East over the Baltimore Orioles to start the day. And there's the second walk given up by Lester of his outing here in the first inning and a long look in to Jerry Lane trying to figure out what that pitch was. That's two pitches in almost the exact same spot and Lester thought both of those should have been called strikes. You'll see the fifth and sixth pitch on the Amica pitch zone just about in the same spot. First outing the Lester is walked to with the exception of opening day. Last game that was down. Two outs runner at first for Jed Lowry. Lowry at 351. Three homers and 14 runs batted in. Over the last four games, though, he has struggled. One for his last 14. That's after having his best game of the year. Four for four game. In Tampa, the final game of that series against the Tampa Bay Rays. April has always been his favorite month, a 318 career batting average in April. Tough numbers against the Red Sox for Lowry, the former Red Sox infielder. And a foul off to the right. Played in Houston last year, one season with the Astros hitting at 244. 16 homers and 42 runs batted in in 97 games. Of course, was here in Boston 2008 through 2011. 256 games in a Red Sox uniform. Two and two. Next pitch will be the 20th of this first inning for John Lester. Lowry lines it into center field for a base hit. Seth Smith will take second base. And the first hit of the day for the Oakland A's. Well, we saw the potential last night of this offense for the uh, Oakland Athletics. Pounding out a lot of hits and a lot of runs and with two outs Lowry gets a high fastball and shoots it up the middle for the two out base hit. So a couple of walks base hit here in the first inning for the Oakland Athletics sandwiched around a ground ball double play. Now look at the A's ranks. Saw the runs they put together last night and then up to 119 on the year. First across the board. They've got runners at first and second with two down. Josh Donaldson, the batter. I'm not sure you would guess that if you took a look at this lineup. Would you pick them as number one across the board offensively? Well, they've got off to a great start. In there for strike one to Donaldson. Especially when you take into account that Reddick has struggled to begin the year. He's on the bench today. And Ioannis Cespedes has been on the DL. No one is on the ground to third. Middlebrooks has got him to go to second for the fourth shot that ends the inning. The threatened but do not score. Red Sox are coming up from Fenway.
Red Sox coming to bat at the bottom of the first and dealing with Brett Anderson. His fifth start, he is one and three with a 5.95 earned run average. A lot of walks so far, 11 of them in 19 and two thirds innings. Kobe Ellsbury shows bunt, pulls back, and takes ball one. 287 with a home run. Nine runs batted in for Ellsbury. Sits safely in 17 of the first 20 Red Sox games on the year. Uh, Brett Anderson has made five starts against, excuse me, eight career starts against the Red Sox, and he's five and two with a 2.70 ERA. Good curveball here from uh, Anderson as he drops on the outside corner. Check swing. They will check, and he didn't go. So Hunter Wintelstead, and the count evens at two and two. Ellsbury with a swing and a miss. Down on strikes. One down here in the first inning. Let's check out the Red Sox batting order. It's brought to you by New England Chevy dealers. We just saw Jacoby Ellsbury. He's in center today with Shane Victorino in right field. Dustin Pedroia at second base bats third. David Ortiz at DH with Mike Napoli at first base. Johnny Gomes in left field bats sixth. Will Middlebrooks at third base. Stephen Drew at shortstop bats eighth. And David Ross doing the catching today. One out here in the bottom of the first inning. Shane Victorino, the batter. And he takes strike one over the outside corner. Victorino has started the last two games after missing the day night doubleheader against Kansas City with a stiff back. To third with Donaldson in at the lip of the grass and quickly throws out Victorino. Let's take a look at the Oakland defense. That's seventh in the American League, 11 errors in 21 games. Josh Donaldson at third base, Jed Lowry the shortstop, Andy Perino at second, and Brandon Moss the first baseman left to right, Seth Smith, Coco Crisp, and Chris Young, and Derek Norris doing the catching for Anderson. Two down here in the first inning for Dustin Pedroia. 293, no homers, and seven runs batted in for Pedroia. Dustin one for eight in the series against the A's. Line towards the gap in left center field. That'll get down. All the way to the wall as Pedroia heads for second base. Crisp gets it back in, but Dustin's at second base with a two out double. Now, just exactly what you're looking for with two out and nobody on that two base hit. Get a man in a scoring position. And Pedroia stays on the fastball that time, finds the gap in left center field. David Ortiz comes up with a man in scoring position. Well, Ortiz, six for 12 since rejoining the Red Sox and coming off the DL. 500 average. He's driven in two runs. It's in all three games since being activated from the DL prior to his season debut. Let's see. Kansas City Royals on Saturday. Now Anderson wants to talk to Derek Norris. Make sure of the signs. The man at second base. First time today. Also how they want to approach David Ortiz. Anderson had one thing in mind. Norris another. Shadows make their way about halfway out to the mound here in this late day baseball game from Fenway. That's in there for a strike. Yeah, David Ortiz kind of buckled. And it's a pretty good breaking ball.
And that's in there for a strike. Going two. Back to back curveball. David Ortiz, the eight time All Star. Not chasing that. It's one and two. And so far this season, he is two for three with runners in scoring position. He's got Pedroia at second base, two outs. Mike Napoli in behind him, winning on deck. And a swing and a miss. Ortiz strikes out. Two strikeouts in the inning for Anderson. We're scoreless after one. And for fans who were here last night through that beautiful rainy weather, the Red Sox would like to invite you back to either tonight's game or tomorrow night's game. So if you have your ticket stub from last night, you can bring it to Gate E two hours prior to the game and get that ticket renewed for a game either tonight or tomorrow. So fans at home that were there, you should do that. Last night was pretty tough, Jerry. That's a nice gesture by the Red Sox to do that, too, on a very, very nasty night here in Boston. Brandon Moss leading it off here in the second inning. Take strike one from Lester. Moss at 302. Two homers and 16 runs batted in. Moss, Chris Young, and Nate Fryman bat in the inning. Brandon Moss three for four in last night's game. Now in ten career games against the Red Sox, a team that he came up through the minors with and of course appeared in the majors. He's got a 636 average against his former team. He's now 14 for 22 against Boston. Of course traded in the Manny Ramirez deal. He ended up with the Pirates and of course to Jason Bay here. And Manny Ramirez in Los Angeles with the Dodgers. And now in Taiwan. Yes, have you seen some of the footage of his home runs? No, I have not. He's got, uh, I think, three now. Three now? Yes. Two two is swing a foul that gets a big piece of David Ross. Right off the foot of David Ross, and he'll have a little hobble as he uh, gets back behind home plate. No one foul back, still two and two to Brandon Moss. 
In the last year in 84 games with the A's after joining the club in June. Had 21 home runs, 52 runs batted in the 84 games. Home runs a career high for him. Thirtieth pitch for Lester, and it's strike three. Ninety-three miles an hour on the fastball that gets Moss for the first out of the second inning. Well, the cold hard facts today are brought to you by Coors Light. Oakland's 13 runs yesterday against the Sox, the most they've ever scored in a shutout at Fenway Park. The Angels have three walk-off hits already this season. Last year's walk-off total for the Halos, that was just three. And Justin and B.J. Upton have now homered in the same game three times this season, the most by a brother tandem since Tommy and Hank Aaron did it three times in 1962. That's not the first time that they're going to connect. It seems that... Both B.J. and Justin going to have a good year with the Atlanta Braves. Braves off to a terrific start. They are 15 and 5 and have the most wins in the majors. And on top of Colorado today, 3 to 2 in what was an extremely cold series at Coors Field. This one fouled back. Justin up there leading the majors with 11 home runs. Wow. Chris Davis, Mark Reynolds, and J.P. Aaron Sebia have seven in the AL to set the pace. This is a long way foul right out of Fenway. Two and two to Chris Young. Started the first two games in left field today in right field. And a 152 average coming in. Lester thought he had that too. Yeah, that's about three of them so far in this game that Lester thought he had. A cut fastball right at the bottom of the strike zone, not called by Jerry Lane. Jerry Lane's got the play today. Greg Gibson at first base. Mike Easterbrook at second base. And Hunter Wintelstead is the umpire at third. Jerry Lane is the crew chief of this crew. Three two. And that is ball four. And Lester will peer in again. Third walk given up by Lester in an inning and a third. Most walks is given up in any outing. Now apparently that low uh, strike is not going to be a strike here this afternoon at least for John Lester anyway there have been a couple of them about four of them now in this game that have been very close to being strikes but none have been called strikes. One out one on for Nate Fryman. From Wellesley, Massachusetts. He got the start in the first game of the series. Back in there again today. And he hits one in the air out towards deep right center field. But Ellsbury has room. Moves back to the warning track to make the catch. Young back to the bag at first with now two outs here in the second inning. Now Fryman put a pretty good charge into that out in that gap. Of heading toward the 420 but tracking it down with his speed. Jacoby Ellsbury. First pitch fastball down and in. Well, the one pitch at bat helpful to John Lester after back to back batters saw eight pitches each in Moss and Young, but he gets Fryman on one pitch. Young at first, two down, Andy Perino, number nine batter and second baseman. Marino hitting at 095 coming into today's action. He started game one of the series. And a fifth inning single in game one. It snapped an 0 for 17 streak. 
Start of the year at Triple A Sacramento called up on April the 10th. Young at first base has four steals on the season has not been caught. May give it a shot here with two outs to try to get in the scoring position. Runner goes and the pitch gets away. Slides in the second and he will stay there. Stolen base for Chris Young as he was taken off. And he picked a good pitch to go on a breaking ball and a breaking ball that's going to bounce and get by David Ross. He had no idea where the baseball was. He did not peek back. He was just going straight out for the steal and the slide. So with two outs, he gets in scoring position. Tied for third in the American League now in stolen bases with that theft. Behind Crispin Ellsbury in that category is the strike in there from Lester. Strikes up Marino. Second K for Lester. Inning and a half done from the fence. When they host the Tampa Bay Lightning tomorrow night for the Red Sox at home against the Astros. Nesson Plus will bring you pregame coverage starting at 7. Afterwards, Jack Brick and Nalco will bring you all the action as the Bees skate towards the playoffs. And the Bruins and the Lightning tomorrow night live on Nesson Plus. Good to see Billy Jaffe here at the ballpark today, one of our Nesson analysts. As we play along to the bottom of the second inning, does a terrific job. Like Napoli leading it off here for the Red Sox in the bottom of the second inning. The key matchup is brought to you by Acura. Napoli against Anderson, four for ten. David Ross and John Lester working together today and talking it over here. And trying to figure out where the bottom of that strike zone is. 3 0 pitch in there for a strike. Certainly, Napoli with a lot of opportunity to face Brett Anderson in the past, having been a member of the Angels and Rangers and being in the American League West. His career until now is that'll miss for ball four, and Anderson loses him. A leadoff walk for Mike Napoli. Here comes Johnny Gomes, the former Oakland A. 
194 average, no homers, no runs batted in so far for Gomes. Does uh, rank second on the Red Sox with nine walks and has had six walks in the last eight games. Just his second start in left field. And as prior to today, eight of his nine starts had come as a DH. And as he takes strike one. Pitch is going to miss one and one. Johnny Gomes is on the regional cover of Sports Illustrated this week. Boston Strong. Perfect pose, right? Yes, it is. One one pitch is chop foul outside a third. Well, the Red Sox will be honoring some of the Watertown. Police officers today here at Fenway Park in the fourth inning. Jenny Dell will be along to talk with one of them a little bit later on. One two pitch is up top two and two. A double by Dustin Pedroia the only hit so far for the Red Sox but a leadoff walk for Mike Napoli. So we get things here in the home half of the second inning. Got it foul into the Oakland dugout. Yeah, breaking ball coming inside on Gomes, and he just uh, rifles it toward uh, his former club's dugout. Kurt Young, Mike Gallego over there, and Bob Melvin. Coaching staff was in the line of that one. Driven to center. Coco Crisp drifts back and makes the catch. Backpedaling onto the dirt of the track and Napoli back to the bag at first. But a good contact as Anderson falls down after making that pitch. Good contact by Gomes, but uh, Crisp with all kind of speed to spare and uh, center field makes the play. One on, one out. Will Middlebrooks. 173, five homers and 10 runs batted in, but first to check on Mike Napoli at first base. Middlebrooks leading the team in home runs. Team high, five home runs. His last one coming in game one of the series. Uh, Three run shot. One for seven now in this series against the A's. Looks like the glove broke uh, for Derek Norris. He's going to head to the dugout to try to get a new one. Well, the great baseball action continues this week when the Red Sox take on the new AL rival Houston Astros. Get your tickets for this great series by calling 877 Red Sox 9 online at redsox.com slash tickets or visit the Fenway Park ticket office. Remember during the month of April kids 12 and under eat free and KM Fenway Franks are two for one all month long. Four game series coming up over the weekend against Houston newest member of the American League. Looks like he's now going to get a glove that was out in the bullpen. Let's set it down to Jenny. Well, Don, AT&T brings us our Twitter question of the day with Daniel Bard being called up last night by the Sox. How much of an impact do you think he will have on the Sox bullpen? Send us your tweet with the hashtag Bard called up and we'll reveal the best ones later in the game. Hashtag Bard called up. A bit of a surprise, I guess, uh, last night after the ball game and 
He is here today, jumping up from Double A Portland and joining the bullpen again. It's great to see him back and certainly rooting for him. The kind of guy you do root for and hope that he can get back to where he was. Arguably the best eighth inning man in the game at one point before the experiment with the starting role and all that took place last year. And going back to that roster move, I felt bad for Stephen Wright uh, making yeah. his major league debut in the conditions he had to do last night. It was just awful here at Fenway. And of course, uh, after those innings sent back to the minor leagues, Bard getting the call for a fresh arm out of the bullpen. Middlebrooks will pop it up right side of the infield and Perino to the outfield now to make the catch for the second out here of the second inning. You know, and for right last night, he had been so long in between outings. He's been sitting here for a long time in the bullpen. Yep, just for that role right there uh, as a long man. Two down, Napoli at first base, and Stephen Drew, the former Oakland A, coming up. 114, no homers, and a run batted in. He's now started at shortstop, 12 of the last 14 Red Sox games since. Coming off the DL and taking ball one. Limited last year to 79 games between two locales, Arizona and Oakland. And after starting the year in the DL, recovering from the right ankle surgery. Finished the year with the A's and in the postseason. So, of course, the Western Division winners in the American League last year. Ball on a strike to Stephen Drew. So far, 0 for 7 against left handed pitching. In a Red Sox uniform. Bert Anderson trying to work his way around a leadoff walk to begin things here in the second inning. Walk Napoli, and since then he's got Gomes to fly out, Middlebrooks to pop out. Now a 2 1. That is strike two. Full count now will give Napoli a start at first base with two outs in the inning. Swing and a foul tip held on to by Derek Norris for strike three. Third strike out for Anderson. No score from Fenway.
top of the third inning. No score. Red Sox and Oakland A's wrapping up their three game series. On, it was a beautiful day here at Fenway Park and shadows encompassing the home plate area. And John Lester ready to work to the top of the A's order and a grounder foul off the bat of Coco Crisp who leads it off. Crisp walked in the first inning. One of three walks given up by John Lester in the first two innings. And keep in mind that's the most walks Lester has had in any outing this season. Has thrown seven of ten. First pitch strikes today. And ahead here, 0 and 2. Good curveball here from John Lester as he gets Chris looking at it out on his front foot. Chris protecting the plate, fouls it off. And Lester today coming in holding opponents to two runs or fewer in less than five hits in each of his first four starts in 2013. Well. One two pitch what do you think I'd like to go out there but I can't. Yeah. I've got a job to do. He's Bob from Chicopee. Which is in the dirt and the count is two and two. Beautiful day to be out uh, on the monster seats or anywhere in the ballpark today. Fiftieth pitch of the day for John Lester. He started then stopped here. This one fouled off. Still two and two. On deck is Derek Norris, then Seth Smith. Fifth of the last ten batters Lester has faced have seen at least six pitches. They've been patient, and there's ball three, full count. Yeah, they have been patient, and John hasn't got much help either uh, from the bottom part of the strike zone, which has created the high pitch count here early in the ball game. Yeah, a place that he operates with regularity. That's where he wants to be. Three-two pitch. His grounded foul. Coco Crisp saw seven pitches in his first at bat. About to get his ninth pitch of this at bat. And he lines it foul. Can't beat that. You get the baseball, you get food, you get everything. Red Sox jacket on. In the air to right field, it brings Victorino in and over. And he makes the catch for the first out of the inning. And not many of us will forget Coco Crisp in Seattle almost getting run over by the Moose as he was trying to take the field. And John Farrell certainly will not forget it. He was fired up in that instance. He's is going after the Moose. <laughs> he followed that Moose, yes, too, right up the runway. That's when John was the pitching coach with the Red Sox a few years back and Coco Chris Cross here with the Red Sox playing center field. One out in the third inning Derek Norris the batter bounced into a 5 4 3 twin killing in the first inning. Up foul off to the right out of play, and it is one and one. Red 
very nervous today, Jerry. We have one of the most esteemed radio and TV critics in the booth with us today, listening to the game. Yes, uh, and, uh, my granddaughter is here for a first yes. visit to Fenway, Ariana. And she's listening intently to see how you're doing. Two two pitches fouled off. So she's, far, a, she's, she's actually a big fan of yours, Don. Really? Yes. Well, she just gave me the thumbs up on you so far. I said, what'd you think of Grandpa? Thumbs up. So thumbs far, up. so good. Yeah, thumbs good. up. Good stuff. <laughs> Jerry Lane may have gotten hit with that. Last foul tip as it takes a little extra time and brings the baseball to John Lester. Yeah, the ball bouncing up right on the left hand. It looks like right left fingers of uh, Jerry Lane. Good way to break a finger. The ball's two strikes to Derek Norris. And a foul back and out of play. What difference a day makes last night rain windy cold today warm lots of sunshine and beautiful day here at Fenway Park play day baseball final game of the three game series Sixtieth pitch for Lester and it's a fly ball to center field out goes Pedroia he's calling and catching out number two so two outs here in the third inning and we had to show our friends from Oakland some some good hospitality we had yes. to give them one good day of weather while they were here anyway I mean they always give us good weather in Oakland yes they are headed home after the game today. They started this road trip in St. Petersburg and Tampa Bay and today we give them a 68 degree day. He's out to left at six miles per hour and the forecast is clear. Seth Smith walked in the first inning one of three based on balls given up by Lester. So today was good, but last night not so much. No, not good. Not good. Oh, no, well, welcome to Fenway Park. <laughs> <laughs> it never got much better. In fact, I think it got worse as the night went on. It certainly got colder. It got much better when I got home. <laughs> One grounded foul, and it is two and two. Jared Pinkos, the bat boy, able to come up with that one over there. Everything okay with Jared Pinkos? I saw you on an extended conversation with him today. That's, that's Actually, that's Chris Gundiff. Yeah, yeah, no, I got Chris the wrong today, yeah. yeah. Now, Jared's fine. Is all, everything's okay? Yeah, okay. actually, that's a new rule this year that we didn't know about last night. There is strike three. We'll talk more when we come back. We're through two and a half. Scoreless from Fenway Park.
Woods, Carvey, Miller, Nealon in the MGM Grand at Foxwoods, Saturday, May 25th. For tickets, visit foxwoods.com or call 1-800-200-2882. Now back at Fenway Park and Jerry Lane is still hurting from that foul tip and it looks like he may be coming out of this game. Yeah we may have a change of umpires here they'll have to go back into the umpires room and get that uh, behind the home plate equipment on. Looks like we'll continue with Lane for a while, but uh, maybe just with three umpires until it uh, looked like uh, Easterbrook, right, going yes. in to get the equipment on. Well, he said it. He may have fractured it. Look at the foul tip by Derek Norris. It's the bare hand of Jerry Lane. He looked at him in between innings, and Norris, who had the foul tip, went over and checked on him. No appreciable swelling so far, but easy for me to say. Yes, as we are quite I'm a distance a, away from the pain. I am not a doctor. No. <laughs> no, you don't feel that pain. <laughs> David Ross leads it off here in the bottom of the third inning. Ross at 143. The home run, two runs batted in. Two one in the air to right center field struck well sending Chris back still going on to the warning track and into the triangle to make the catch out there. David Ross sends it a long way but not in this ballpark as Coco Chris can get back and make the catch. Yeah, so frustrating for power hitters to, to hit one that you know you got all of you got a lot of contact good solid contact but it's heading out that 420 area and. Just an awful lot of room for speedy center fielders to track that ball down. Very nice sign. And certainly we all feel much safer today as one out in the third inning and Jacoby Ellsbury stands in. Rounds this one foul. Ellsbury struck out swinging in the first inning, one of three strikeouts for Brett Anderson. Fights it off, foul down the left field line, out of play. Defensive swing. Ellsbury fortunate to just get a piece of that, stay alive. Mentioned last uh, last game that Anderson pitched only lasted one inning, came out with a bad ankle, but apparently having no problems with the ankle today. Pretty nasty curveball right there that Ellsbury just barely gets a piece of. No two. That's outside one and two. You were saying last inning that uh, you weren't aware of the authentication. No, that's not it. Authenticity. <laughs> Auth authenticity of the baseballs. Right. I know. Yeah. Right. That's something new this year. I yeah. guess. If you can say it. Two outs in the inning. 
Nice play by the second baseman Perino. But yeah, I guess that's something new. They have somebody at every game uh, to take those uh, souvenirs and make sure they are authenticized. I think that's the proper yeah, word. Sure. Authenticated would be the proper word. And uh, so everything. Everything. So they're singles, uh, first strikeout, first everything. You're going to keep the ball. Yeah, you got to so get you it. No, it's an official thing. And we right. did not know that last night. We thought that. Uh, Jared had given that ball away, which is obviously not the case. He, right. he knew better than us, and he wanted a hot dog after that. So. No, he did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you fix that because he is like in charge of where the bags go over her traveling party. You know, he weighs them and everything before they go. Uh, yeah, Our no. bags could end up in like I don't know, yeah. Canada or so. Yeah. Well, actually, we are going to Canada next trip, but I mean, could ship yeah. them off anywhere. <laughs> Canada yeah. would be good. It'd Jared. be good if they end up in Canada. Yes. Yeah. If you yeah. send so, them ahead so. to Toronto. That'd be great. Someplace in Canada. Yeah. yeah. Not Chicago or Philadelphia or somewhere else just to get back it. You'll eventually run into him. <laughs> one one pitch is in there for a strike. I was told that I have the heaviest bag in the major leagues. Uh, you do. You have uh, a number of heavy bags that you carry around with you. One two is inside two and two. You're the only guy I know that goes on a three day road trip with two bags. <laughs> two bags. Uh, yeah. I mean, you had two bags uh, to go to Cleveland. The garment for uh, yeah. suits. And I mean, don't be afraid to throw it in one bag. So grounded foul. Covidian delivering innovative health care products across the globe is a proud sponsor of the Red Sox Foundation. Two outs in the third inning. Red Sox have not been able to mount much of an attack here against Brett Anderson and Jerry Lane still ailing. I don't think he's long for this game. Mike Easterbrook has gone in to put the equipment on. As the pitch misses high, full count. Strike three call. Victorino gets the bad news. Thought he had strike three as it turns out. Fourth K for Anderson. by Eastern Bank. You put your family first, your job first, even your team first. Isn't it time someone put you first? Eastern Bank does just that with products like Eastern Free Checking. Here, your first Eastern Bank. Right, welcome back to Warm and Sunny Fenway Park and Jerry Lane icing down that finger as he heads to the dugout. Uh, that will likely be the day for him. 
as Mike Easterbrook will be coming out here for the umpires and so they will get him x-rayed and we have a new home plate umpire we also have a guest Mike McCune from WCAX in Vermont join us great to see you Mike thanks for coming up Don good to see you again Jerry good to see you, you too Mike? pleased to be back here again for another season looking forward to our partnership again and uh, of course, uh, last year, the first year we did it, and this year, uh, Jerry and I actually got up to Vermont and went up to the State House. That was a lot of fun to see you guys. It was a whole lot of fun, and it, it was funny while we were there. You know, you're at the State House, a great sign. You you got to bang the gavel on the, yes. uh, for the, uh, <laughs> right. the that the secretary of the, the House would, and it was funny because all the questions that they asked, there was probably about 50-50 between what's going to happen with the Red Sox this year and what you wear on a daily basis, or if we're going to see more air guitar lessons from you. Uh, it just kind of showed the connection that, that fans have with you guys and with Nesson as well as the Sox because you guys are the ones that are in their homes every year in year in year out and uh, and so that's why it's special for us to be part of this relationship again. Well, it was fun for us to go up there. I know we very much enjoyed it and uh, part of our world tour yes, that indeed. we went on throughout New England. But, Absolutely. Uh, covering some territory in a couple of days. We did. What are your thoughts so far on this year's Red Sox team? I know we talked about the kind of a uh, change in the Red Sox clubhouse. This will make its way into right field. Jed Lowry's got a leadoff single, but it appears that everything we discussed is sort of happening so far here this season. Everyone was curious going in about what the makeup of the team would be, about what the relationships would be, how people would respond to John Farrell being back, and it certainly looks from the from the get-go, especially the pitching staff, John Lester and Clay Buckles, have been outstanding, and they really seem to appreciate having Farrell back, and you talk about getting character guys, and, and what is the definition of character, and winning helps, and it's working so far. Well, Jerry, you've talked a lot about that over the years. Chemistry, it comes with winning. It, it comes with to. winning. That's what I believe. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I, this group here from the first day of sp uh, spring training has been a pretty close-knit ball club. And, uh, uh, of course, it didn't hurt for them to get off to a good start the way they did, and that, that certainly helps everything. Let me ask you a question. Did it snow in yes. Vermont last night? It was no, it just rained. Just rained. It just rained. It seemed like it was cold enough for snow. Yeah, we, yeah. we wanted to ask Sharon what was going on <laughs> weather-wise there. But does, is Sharon here today? Does Sharon she is not here today, okay. and she is very disappointed in that because she is. I would. I think it's safe to say that she's the biggest Red Sox fan in the group uh, at the station. But it, but it's great for us too because our, our uh, Sharon Meyer and our weather team get to provide the forecast and uh, you know. Last night to today. I mean, you want yeah. to, it's wow. weather in New England. Wait five minutes and it'll change. But this is an extreme. You go from uh, from midwinter to midsummer in the course of about uh, 18 hours. And batting here is Josh Donaldson, the runner at first and nobody out. We understand the governor of Vermont's big. Red Sox fan, and we missed him when we were there. Yes, uh, he, I think he was out uh, on. Uh, he was out of the state house at the time, but yeah, he was down here for uh, Vermont Day on Sunday. Mm -hmm. uh, just you know, you know, a huge Red Sox fan, part of the contingent as well. And I, uh, Jerry, I got to say. I was completely ready to come in and talk with you guys today, and I was nervous at all. But now that I know that Ariana's listening, <laughs> it, you, you, you had to mention that. One at second, but not one at first. Able to beat it out as Donaldson. They get the lead runner in Lowry. You had to mention that before I came on. <laughs> I'm a little nervous now. Yes, yeah, she's very critical of everybody, <laughs> that's for sure. Tough ball will turn over right here because Drew has to come in and then that shuffle back to Pedroia. He's going to get hit. He knows it. And by the time they uh, they, they turn a double play or, or get it turned, it's just too late at first base. Tough ball to handle, too. That ball was uh, right about belt high for Pedroia, and he had a little trouble getting it out of his glove. One out, one on. Brandon Moss is the batter. And that drops in for a strike. We were talking about the governor of Vermont on Vermont Day, and he threw out the first pitch, as you might imagine, on Vermont Day. All right, let's see the uh, let's see the form. There's always pressure. That's a good throw right there. Got to say, that's not a bad throw as at all. Good arm. Not bad. Good arm. Probably did some warming up beforehand. It was a nice day on Sunday too. It was. Yeah. And we have another special uh, connection because tomorrow before the game. Uh, the members of the junior ROTC from Spalding High School in Barrie will be presenting the colors okay. uh, for the game tomorrow. So uh, another uh, really cool opportunity for some kids from Vermont who are all huge Red Sox fans, and none of them have been to a Red Sox game yet in their lives. So their first opportunity to be here at Fenway will be out on the field presenting the colors. 
How was the winter sports-wise in Vermont? Anything happened there this winter? It was a good winter overall. The uh, the UVM men's basketball team had a pretty successful season. Uh, they made it all the way to the uh, uh, championship game, lost at home in a tough game uh, to Albany, uh, ended up playing in a postseason tournament after that. Uh, the uh, UVM men's hockey team uh, got back into the hockey's playoffs. So... Uh, He's off the glove with Drew and out to center field, stopping at second base as Donaldson throw goes there, but he's back and safe. Well, it's working with three umpires, which makes it a little bit more <laughs> challenging as everybody's moving around. It was a good summer. It was a good uh, winter as well for uh, Norwich hockey. Men's and women's teams had good years. Uh, Plattsburgh women, Middlebury women as well. So it, it's a big winter sports community, both on the uh, hockey and the baseball side. Skiing as well, obviously uh, big in our area. But then everyone, everyone wants spring to get here so that we can get back to the Red Sox and, and get the season underway. Well, Mike, we look forward to partnering with you as well and, of course, at WCAX in Vermont. And thanks so much for coming up. Great to see you again. Absolutely. Fantastic right. seeing you Thank guys. You. Look forward right, to having the opportunity to see you guys on the news uh, night in, night out. Very right, good. Right. We look forward to it very much. Our friend Mike McCune stopping by here at Fenway Park as right now the Oakland A's have runners at first and second with one out and Chris Young, the batter. That's in there for a strike, and it's 0-1. Coming into this inning, Lester had thrown 65 pitches, so a lot of pitches for the first three innings, and certainly an issue early in this game. In the air to deep left field, high and deep, and that is gone. Three-run home run for Chris Young, his third of the year. And the Oakland A's take a 3 nothing lead here in the top half of the fourth inning. Looked like a curveball that time from John Weston. It just kind of spun up the home plate, did not really do a lot of breaking, and Young stayed right on it for the home run. Yeah, it is the curveball right there. It stays out over the plate, and Young hooks it off the light stand. And John Lester not happy with himself after that three run home run. Now Fryman stands in and takes ball one. And Chris Young, his third home run of the season, ninth RBI here at Fenway Park, and he's having fun now. Strike over the inside corner. Another strike two and two. That is the first home run John Lester has surrendered this year. Another close pitch that he wanted. The umpire and still not getting the calls that he wants. Trying that cut fastball back door, cut fastball, just missing the outside corner. And he walks Fryman. There's the fourth walk given up by John Lester of his outing. One more look at the home run swing from Young. Andy Perino, number nine batter, second baseman. Struck out swinging in the second inning. Three strikeouts for Lester. He's actually walked more than he has struck out today. As this one's back up the middle, could be two. Pedroia to second for one on to first, and it is two. Lester and the Red Sox needed that, but a three run home run for Chris Young as the Oakland A's on top, three nothing.
Pedroia, Ortiz, and Napoli here in the bottom of the fourth inning. That'll miss for ball one. Red Sox with work to do now as they trail three to nothing. Thanks to the three run home run by Chris Young in the top half of this inning. Now John Lester certainly frustrated by the inning as he gives up the three run shot and lets some of that frustration out. On the ground left side, Jed Lowry down to get it off the shoot tops and fires to first to get Pedroia. Ness's coverage of Red Sox baseball is brought to you in part by Eastern Bank. You always put others first. Wouldn't it be nice if your bank did the same thing with products that make life easier and a commitment to helping those in need? Here, your first Eastern Bank. We were just on television. <laughs> One out here in the fourth inning. As David Ortiz struck out in the first inning, rattles one to left field. Back goes Smith looking up, and it is high off the wall. Smith will play the camera. Ortiz got to hurry up. Throw to second base will be not in time. Big Poppy is in safe. He threw it into another gear. Yeah, it looked like the throw beat David Ortiz to second base, but on the slide. He's going to be safe at second. Well played off the wall out there in left field. Ortiz gets that fastball down out over the plate goes with the inside out swing high off the wall. Smith with the bare hand the throw to second base. It looks like it's got Ortiz but just gets the foot on the ball on the bag before the tag. He put that head down it was going as hot as he could. So a one out double here for Big Poppy. A good sign to see him run that well. Into another gear there towards second base without hesitation. Napoli will take it inside again. 2 0. Oh. Send it down to Jenny. Well, Don, I spoke to David Ortiz earlier, and clearly the numbers aren't showing this, but he said, I'm not going to lie to you, I still don't feel 100% comfortable at the plate. He said, not facing pitching for eight months, I've been lucky, I've been hitting where nobody's at, but I still don't feel the way that I like to feel. It took a little while for that to happen as he settles back in without a spring training at all. And just 18 at bats in his rehab stint. Well, you know, when you're on that rehab stint that, that Ortiz was on, he was actually more concerned about the way he was moving around, mm -hmm. you know, than more than hitting. 3 0 green light and a swing and a miss for Napoli. And trying to get the Red Sox back in the game very quickly with that 3 0 fastball, but uh, Napoli with a swing and miss. Sixtieth pitch for Anderson, and it is lined into left center. Ortiz was headed back to second base to try and score, and Butterfield sends him around. Throw is cut off, and the Red Sox are on the board. It's an RBI double for Mike Napoli, and it's three to one now. Oakland on top. Well, the two power guys back to back: David Ortiz, Napoli, both with doubles. Napoli picking up his 26th RBI of the season. For a while, David was going back towards second base. Try to get out of the way of the baseball, it looked like, and then he's waved on by Butterfield and scores the first run of the afternoon for Boston. So the Red Sox are on the board. Napoli at second base, one out. Johnny Gomes the batter. Let's take a look at ball one. Pitch that Anderson wanted. And Napoli now 26 RBIs in the American League. Chris Davis with 22 of the Orioles and Prince Fielder with 21. Another close pitch, but it's 2-0.
Napoli with 26 RBIs. He is now the most of the majors. Inside for ball three. Let's see if Gomes gets the green light three and oh. Gomes now, Middlebrook's next. Red Sox batting here in the bottom of the fourth. Takes and takes the strike. Got a fastball, too. will take the walk second walk given up by Anderson are you the leader of a group of 20 or more a Red Sox game at Fenway Park is the perfect place for your next outing call 617-226-6835 to plan the perfect trip today Kurt Young the pitching coach on the mound here to talk to Anderson who after getting Pedroia to ground out to begin things in the fourth inning gave up back to back doubles Ortiz and Napoli. Red Sox get a run and then he walks Johnny Gomes. So the tying run at first base now for Boston and Will Middlebrooks coming up. Middlebrooks popping out to second base and Andy Perino in the second inning. Ground ball back to the mound. Anderson will fire to second base. Out there. And what was a very close play. And going in hard was Gomes, but uh, that ended up being pretty close. Yeah, it looks like Gomes beat the throw, but maybe overslid the bag. Gomes hustling to second base, going in hard. Let's take one, one more look. He goes by the bag and is actually tagged out. Because it looked like to me with the slide he had beat the play. But then the tag is on him once he gets by the bag. So two down first and third and here's Stephen Drew. Drew struck out swinging in the second inning one of four strikeouts today for Brett Anderson. Napoli at third, Middlebrooks at first, two down here in the fourth inning. That's a strike, one and one. A guy who had Tommy John surgery returned to the A's in late August last year and made six starts before his regular season ended. A right oblique strain. This is lined in the right field, a base hit for Drew. Napoli will score. Middlebrook's headed for third and maybe beyond. Butterfield's going to send him. They're going to try and score him. The throw, there is none. And the Red Sox tie the score at three aside. Napoli scores. Middlebrook scores, and it's three to three. A oh, big clutch to our base hit by Drew. He'd been swinging the bat much better recently. He gets what looked to be a fastball inside, and Drew, being the pull hitter, pulls it right by the first baseman, Brandon Marks, who was holding the man on the back. Two runs come across. The throw goes in the third base. But Drew standing on third base. Here's Middlebrooks coming around to score. Fifty-third career triple. And third base and driving in two. There's a swing and a miss for David Ross. Big cut there. 
So the A's score three times in the top half of the fourth. Red Sox answer with three of their own in the bottom of the fourth inning. And a chance here now to take the lead with Stephen Drew at third base. A one pitch. There's strike two. Ross strikes out to end the inning. We have played four from Fenway, now all tied up. As the Watertown Police honored here at Fenway Park here this afternoon for all that they did. Please give them all a hero's welcome for their efforts in protecting and serving our community. Three to three, the score as we head to the fifth inning. And Coco Crisp out after the first pitch. Middlebrooks to his left. He'll sling it to first for the first out of the inning. Well, John Luster would like nothing but a 1 2 3 inning here in the fifth. Pitch count mounting for him, but the big thing, the Red Sox came back to tie the ball game. Wants to get him right back up at the plate. Yeah, he's got a clean slate right now after the Red Sox offense went to work in the bottom of the fourth inning and the two run triple by Stephen Drew. And the Red Sox have tied this thing up three aside as Derek Norris, the catcher, standing in here for the A's. Norris has grounded into a double play and flied out to center field. He is 0 for 2. Pitching line for John Lester brought to you by Ace Ticket. Four and a third, three runs. The three run home run by Chris Young that he allowed in the fourth inning. This is grounded foul above the Oakland A's dugout. Numbers the same on the scoreboard and left. Three runs, four hits, no errors for both sides. Two and two. Wow. Very yeah. close pitch. Less than one of that one, too. A lot of close pitches today, not going in the 
direction that Lester would like them to go. That ball pulled in a little bit by uh, David Ross, the catcher. Ball four and down to first goes Norris. That's the fifth walk given up by Lester today. Most walks he has given up in a game uh, prior to today was two, and that was in his first outing against the New York Yankees. Well, now one on, and Seth Smith, the batter, he has a walk of his own today. He struck out looking in the third, and here he is for his third plate appearance of the day. Time call. Lester holding the baseball a long time. Last year in September, Lester had walked a career high seven. There were two times last year where he walked five in a game, but five so far here today. And the breaking ball missing for ball one. Swing and a miss, and it's one and one. Back to the cut fastball on the outside part of the plate. No contact by Smith. They really play him to pull in the infield. There's that cut fastball, but uh, Middlebrook's way over near shortstop. Not a complete shift on, but uh, certainly expecting Smith to pull the ball. Reaching and swinging and missing is Smith. Seth Smith, of course, coming up in the major leagues with the Colorado Rockies. And the Rockies team that uh, the Red Sox beat in 07 for their world championship. This one sliced foul off to the left, and it hangs at one and two. It was the first year of the big leagues for Smith. Last year spending time at Oakland. One for two in the 07 World Series. Final out of the series. Part of that incredible Rockies team that won 21 to 23 just to get the one game playoff against Adrian Gonzalez's San Diego Padres. And then eventually to the World Series. This is driven to center field. Ellsbury going back and he'll get there. Shy of the running track. Norris had to retag second and get back to first, and he will with a slide as he thought that was going to get in for sure, but Ellsbury gets there. Two down. Yeah, good solid contact by Smith against Lester, but Ellsbury covering the ground to make the play. And you're right, the Norris was right about at second base, retagged to get back to first base. Two down, runner at first, Jed Lowry, the batter. Lowry is two for two, singled in the first, singled in the fourth. And a grounder to short. Drew plays the hop, comes up to him, and goes the second on the shuffle pass to end the inning. Halfway through this one, game tied 3-3.
at Fenway Park as we head to the bottom of the fifth inning. Nice recovery. Go Lester. Right. Thank you, Boston. Jacoby Ellsbury leading it off here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Ellsbury, Victorino, and Pedroia. Pitch will miss for ball one to Ellsbury. His third at bat of the day. Ellsbury struck out in the first, grounded out in the third. First baseline that'll trickle foul. Pitching line is brought to you by Lexus. Four plus. Brett Anderson has given up four hits, three runs all coming in the bottom of the fourth inning. Up to 76 pitches. Anderson came into today's effort with a one and three mark. One, two is on the ground and heading from second base. Perino, no play. Too much speed from Ellsbury, even if Perino picks that cleanly, he has no chance. Yeah, you can tell the way the ball was hit. I mean, there's no way that Perino was going to have a play because of Ellsbury's speed. Just reaches out to make contact, gets it by the pitcher who is falling off toward the third base side. It becomes the second baseman's uh, challenge right there, but uh, even if he handles that, no chance to get Ellsbury at first base. So the Red Sox have the lead runner on here in the home half of the fifth inning. Ellsbury picks up his first hit. And Victorino shows bunt, grabs the attention of Donaldson charging from third. Ellsbury takes off and the throw down to second base not going to be close. He steals it easily. Uh, not even close at all. He had a walking lead at first base. Anderson did not stop him at all. See him coming off the bag. I mean, he's still moving. And the fake bunt is designed to keep that catcher back as long as possible. Ellsbury picks up number 10 on the season. First in the majors in that category. First to reach. Double digits in stolen bases and in scoring position with nobody out. Ball and a strike to Shane Victorino. And dropping it down the first baseline, it'll go foul. Ellsbury with the infield hit steals second base. He's there with nobody out. Here in the bottom of the fifth inning, a one two pitch coming up here to Shane Victorino. On the ground, down the third baseline foul. Up high, two and two. Action for the Oakland A's in their pen. Chris Resop up in the pen. We've seen him already in the series. Contact. 
83rd pitch for Anderson. And a grounded foul again. Is that Bill Titus that almost got hit in the head by that ground I think ball? So. Whoa, yes. Well, he's got stuff falling <laughs> off. He's got all kind of stuff going on down there. Look out, Bill. It's coming your way this time a little further. Ellsbury at second base with nobody out here in the fifth. Victorino in a battle here with Brett Anderson. On the ground and a fair ball by the dive of Donaldson at third base to the corner. Ellsbury coming around to score easily and into second base with an RBI double. Goes Shane Victorino. Red Sox on top four to three. Well, they kept trying the curveball to Victorino. He fouled a couple of them off. And gets finally gets one to stay fair. Once again, it's the curveball right there, and Victorino right down that third base line to drive in Ellsbury and gets himself in a scoring position. Diving attempt at third base by Donaldson. Like Donaldson might have hurt his uh, shoulder a little bit as he went into that dive, but appears to be okay right now. Victorino standing in at second base as his double picks up his eighth RBI. As Pedroia takes down and in for ball one. Now Victorino has been terrific in his first year with the Red Sox. Defensively, offensively, he's had some big hits. Great beginning to his Red Sox career. As the Sox on top here, four to three. Pedroia takes ball two. Swing from Pedroia. The opponents had hit it just 219 coming into this outing for Brett Anderson against Anderson. And Red Sox have scored four times against him as Pedroia takes another ball and is ahead. Three and one. David Ortiz waiting on deck. Still nobody out here in the last of the fifth inning. And he'll race it down, but can do nothing with it. Everybody's safe. Victorino to third. Pedroia reaches at first with nobody out in the inning. Another yeah. hot shot. Yeah, that was a nice effort by Donaldson down at third base. He saved the run because that was an absolute bullet off the bat of Pedroia. Watch that ball explode, and he just gets the thumb of the glove on it to slow it down. And that's going to keep Victorino at third base and Pedroia at first base. Kurt Young, the pitching coach, back out again to talk to Anderson. This stop still warming in the pen for the Oakland A's. Well, Dunkin' Donuts is proud to support the One Fun Boston. Next time you grab a coffee at your local Dunkin' Donuts, please donate one dollar to the One Fun Boston. 100% of the donations will help support those most affected by the Boston Marathon tragedy. To learn more, please visit www.onefundboston.org. First and third with nobody out. A run in here in the fifth inning. And a chance here for Big Poppy to do more damage. Oh 
Ortiz struck out swinging in the first inning. He doubled and scored in the fourth inning. Victorino at third, Pedroia at first. 2 0. Oh. That's a strike, two and one. Big Poppy sitting on a fastball in that 2 0 -oh count, did not get it, got the curveball from. Anderson. Anderson up to 93 pitches in his outing. Ortiz bounced it left side. Throw into left field, a base hit. Victorino from third will score, and the Red Sox take a 5 3 lead. Big Poppy drives in a run. Well, you've got to love the approach Ortiz has taken in his last couple of at bats against the lefty. Going to the opposite field on both occasions, once for a double. This time for the single and an RBI. Third RBI of the season for David Ortiz. Pitching change from Fenway. Red Sox on top five to three. Eric Brewers and Green Mountain K-Cups delivered right to your office. Who do you call for the flavors you want and prices you'll savor? Who but W.B. Mason. Well, that is the game for Brett Anderson. He is still responsible for the two men on. Dustin Pedroia at second base. David Ortiz at first already touched for five runs on eight hits here today in four plus innings. Did not record an out in the fifth inning and Oakland A's go to the pen. Chris Resop into the game. His 11th appearance, 1 0 with a 3.00 earned run average. Nine innings, he's given up 10 hits. Opponent sitting at 270 against Resop. He has not allowed an earned run in nine of his last 10 outings. Welcome to your first game. And nicer conditions for your first game here today. Red Sox now have a lead on top five to three. Mike Napoli leading it off has walked and doubled. He is driven in a run. And Napoli gets hit with the first pitch from Risa. This will load the bases. Well, Napoli's been hit a couple of times uh, in this series. Once uh, on the elbow area. And now Resop gets him to load the bases. Fastball inside this time taking it off the ribs. Pinch hitter coming up here for the Red Sox in lieu of Johnny Gomes. It'll be Daniel Nava. 
He'll pinch hit for Gomes. Red Sox with an opportunity to open this game up right now. Bases loaded, nobody out. Gomes have been 0 for 1 with a walk today. In there for strike one. Oh, but a great start to the season for Daniel Nava. Four for 14 in his career with a grand slam. And of course, grand slam of the first pitch he saw in the majors. Ball and a strike now to Nava. One for seven in this series coming into this pinch hitting appearance. First game that he's not started of the three game series. Pedroia, Ortiz, and Napoli on the bases. Breaking ball outside, two and one. Anderson still responsible for two men on. On the outside corner to even the count. Fastball at 95 that time. Did a lot of off speed pitches of Nob, and then he seeks that 95 by him. Right side into right field, a base hit. Pedroia will score. David Ortiz will be stopped at third. Another run in for Boston. And the Red Sox take a 6-3 lead. The pinch hit RBI single for Daniel Nava. After the 95 mile an hour fastball, it's back to the breaking ball for Resop. And Nava finds the hole between first and second. Have to hold Big Poppy at third base. And the bases remain loaded with nobody out. John Henry like that. Derek Norris out to talk to Resop, and he'll be joined by Kurt Young, the pitching coach. Stop his face two batters he hit Napoli gives up an RBI single to Nava. Jerry Blevins the left hander is up in the pen. And that's the deal that brings you everything you need to know about the day in Boston sports tonight at 10 p.m. Jamison Coyle and Leah Hextall break down today's Sox Oakland finale provide keys to the game three between the Knicks and Celtics as well as preview the Patriots approach to tomorrow's NFL draft. All that and more tonight at 10 p.m. on Nesson Daily. Bases filled with Red Sox. Still nobody out in the inning. Three runs in. Middlebrooks lifts it in the air to left field. Coming in is Smith. He'll make the catch and Ortiz will stay put at third base. That's the first out of the inning. Takes us to Stephen Drew. Hit a two run triple in the fourth inning. His triple tied the game. Red Sox are down at one point in this game, 3 0, but Boston now leads it 6 to 3. And here comes Bob Melvin to make another change. It'll be the second change of the inning. They get Jerry Blevins from the pen with Drew coming up. 6 3 now, Red Sox on top.
nothing after three and a half today and the Red Sox back in a big way in the fourth inning as Mike Napoli would drive in the Red Sox first run in Ortiz and then Stephen Drew with a triple drives in a pair Red Sox had tied the score but Victorino down the line here in the inning scores Ellsbury and then Big Poppy David Ortiz with an RBI single now with a pinch hit single to the right side to score the Red Sox sixth run and the Red Sox have a six to three lead all six of the runs so far have been charged to Brent Anderson, the starting pitcher, who is still responsible for David Ortiz at third base. Chris Resop leaves the game, and Jerry Blevins makes his 11th appearance already of the season. A 0 0.84 earned run average. 14 Ks to just one walk, and opponents hitting at 162 against him. He's in to face Stephen Drew with a swing and a foul tip for a strike one. The eighth member of the Red Sox to bat here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Swinging another foul tip 0 and 2. Three in the fourth, and so far three here in the fifth for the Red Sox. Offense finally gets going after being stymied in last night's rain shortened game. Ball one, one and two. Tease at third, Napoli at second, Nava at first. Two and two. Infield playing back for the Athletics, hoping for a ground ball to get out of this mess right now. Drew looking for something he can get in the air. In the air, but foul. Strikes out in the second out of the inning. Blevins gets Drew two down. And Blevins going to the off speed pitch that time. The curveball to pick up the strikeout with the bases loaded. So now it's up to Ross to try to continue the damage. When our veterans return from Iraq and Afghanistan, a number of them suffer from post traumatic stress and traumatic brain injury. The Red Sox Foundation's home base program treats them. We thank H.B. Hood for supporting the Red Sox Foundation's efforts. Bases filled with Red Sox and a pitch outside to David Ross. Ross flight out to the warning track in the third inning in center field. Struck out swinging in the fourth inning. That's a strike one and one. That's one pitch that John Lester was wish he was getting all yeah. day. That low strike. And John's been sitting a while, but he does not mind his three run 
Deficit is gone and now has a 3-1 three run pad right now as this is laced foul out ahead. This season Ross has had one plate appearance with the bases loaded and he walked. That's with Ortiz at third, Napoli at second, Nav at first, and two down. Up and away for ball two. Clemens is not allowed to run in nine of his first ten outings. Or six and a third innings, the worked of the year. Just 162 against him. Ross fouls it back. Tip Ross getting a piece to stay alive. Now Blevins tries that slow curveball and a little bit off balance as Ross on it, but still able to foul it off. Gives himself one more chance with the bases loaded. It's Kobe Ellsbury waiting on deck. Ross, the ninth member of the Red Sox, to bat here in the fifth inning. It's a fly ball to right field. Young racing over. Now the wind's going to take it. He will make the catch to end the inning. But a great inning for the Red Sox. They add three runs and take a 6-3 lead. by Detective Lieutenant Michael Lawn. Michael, you obviously there on Friday in Watertown. A day I'm sure you're always going to remember. What can you say about the team that you had working behind you and aside you the entire process? Um, it, it was truly an unimaginable event that happened in Watertown last Friday. I'm so proud to be a member of the Watertown Police Department. Everybody came out, did their job, but there was a coordinated effort with many other agencies as well. Boston Police, State Police, FBI, the T, as well as our local fire department and DPW. Everybody worked together. It was a long day. Some of us were there 22, 23 hours, and I couldn't be more proud to be part of it. I know everyone here thanks you. You were... Um 
acknowledged here at Fenway Park, actually used to work security here at Fenway Park. What can you say about the support of Boston and this entire city and nation coming together? Uh, that was truly awesome. I didn't know if I was going to make it here t uh, today with, the, with everything going on, the investigation and everything. And I, I came in here and just to get up there, it was truly emotional to stand up there. It, it was a real good feeling. I thank the Red Sox for that. And we have a T-shirt here, Watertown Strong, and I know fans at home are going to be interested on how to get one of these, so can you give us the website? Yeah, we designed these the other day. Everyone's looking for T-shirts. I think we just had a couple of pencils and a magnets in, in a draw before this happened. But, uh, yeah, if you go to watertownpolicestrong.com, uh, these shirts are for sale, and they're all going to be uh, donated to the Watertown Police Foundation. Great, and they're only $20. A great, great way to support Watertown Police. Thank you for all that you've done. Okay, thanks. And for fans at home, if you want to be interviewed at some point during the game, go to Nesson.com slash stories to give us a reason why you're coming to Fenway Park. This is line to left and a backhander by Nava cannot secure it. It gets away. Ellsbury will track it down. And into second base goes Josh Donaldson as the Oakland A's try to answer. A three-run bottom of the fifth inning. It is a double for Donaldson. A sinking line drive to Daniel Nava. He tries to go to the backhand and it goes right off the top of the glove or actually the heel of the glove. Looks in there. The ball's not there. It's by him. And leadoff double. So Donaldson at second base, Brandon Moss coming up. Moss struck out swinging in the second inning. He singled and scored in the fourth. Red Sox have action in the pen for the first time today. Chinichi Tozawa. Swing and a miss for Brandon Moss. One for two today. Struck out in the second, singled and scored in the fourth inning. Up foul back and out of play. Moss wasn't sure where it was. He was looking around. Sometimes that happens. You make contact, you have no idea where the baseball is. First, you look out toward the field and hope it's uh, in that direction, but uh, that time foul back by Moss. Want to make sure it was back behind him. And out of play, he was hoping. Breaking ball and a swing and a miss. Strikes out Moss. Curve ball from Lester for the first out of the inning. Hell, everything away from Brandon Moss and that at bat. And finally, Lester puts him away with the curve ball. You see the fourth pitch. Down, lower part of the strike zone and away. The pitch zone on Nesson is brought to you by Amica. Amica Insurance. Great service, great coverage, and a great price for auto, home, or life insurance. One out Donaldson at second base and Chris Young the batter who took Lester out of the yard in the fourth inning a three run home run. Here's strike one. For Chris Young his third home run of the year. And at the time put the A's on top three nothing. A lot has happened since and a lot of good things for the Red Sox. No one biting in on a bowling two. That's the cut fastball there from Lester. Down where he wants it. Hoping to get a swing from Young. Make contact on that. You're probably going to foul it off your shin. In the air down the right field line and that'll end up foul.
Swing and a foul, still 0 2. And looking back over Lester's outings this season, the first one was a five inning effort at New York. Followed by three straight seven inning efforts at Toronto home against Tampa Bay and then last time out at Cleveland. Up over a hundred pitches as he works here in the sixth inning with only one out 106. Second highest total of the season already. As he threw 115 pitches last time out against Cleveland in that seven inning effort. I'll remind you to stay with Nesson after the game for WB Mason Extra Innings Live. Tom Karen Lanker Nesson's breakdown of game highlights, interviews, and John Farrell's post game press conference. WB Mason Extra Innings Live. You can't go wrong when you buy right. WB Mason. Swing and a miss. Strikes out Young. Back to back case for Lester. Two down. It's time for a Toyota game break. Here's Tom Karen. Thanks very much, Tom. Another K added here for Lester now. Five in the game. Yeah, there are two outs in the sixth inning. That's a great changeup by Lester, too. That last pitch, he thrown him everything but a changeup till the end and got the strikeout with it. Fryman taking a pitch inside, 2-0. Some people still looking for the baseball, but the uh, little girl's got it <laughs> with some ice cream. Got to get a hold of that spoon in a hurry yeah, because gonna go. it's going to end up on the floor. <laughs> it's going to make eating that ice cream very difficult without it. Swing and a miss, and it's two and two. Lester trying to finish off this outing. The two outs here in the sixth inning. Lead off double for Josh Donaldson still at second base. Bryman chops it down the first baseline a foul ball. Instead, and ends up walking it. So climbing down to first base, that is the sixth walk given up by Lester today. Now this one not even close from Lester, the last one, but he's upset about the pitch before that.
First and second, two down. Andy Perino, the batter, is 0 for 2 in the game. He struck out of the second, bounced into a double play in the fourth inning. Grounded down the third baseline. Middlebrooks charge in, barehanded, no throw, and the bases are loaded. But nobody out at infield hit for Perino. A swinging bunt down that third baseline, and all Middlebrooks could do was field it and hope that the guy ran at third base, the runner would run third base and get him, but uh, that's not the case. And John Farrell making his way out. Well, John Lester, 115 pitches thrown last time out, 115 pitches this time out. The change from Fenway. Baseball everywhere you go and is available for iPhone, iPad, Android, and Blackberry 10. At bat delivers Red Sox baseball with live audio, pitch tracking, stats, news, highlights, and more. Text at bat to 31826 or visit redsox.com for details. Now this call to the bullpen is brought to you on Nesson by New England Ford dealers. Shinichi Tozawa. Receives the call and here he is with two outs in the sixth inning into his tenth game of the year, two and zero, with a 0.93 earned run average. Worked to nine and two thirds, another 10 Ks and no walks for Tozawa. An opponent batting average of 182. He's inherited three runners this season coming into games and none of them have scored. Now he comes in to a bases loaded two out situation here in the sixth inning. Trying to prevent any of them scoring as Coco Crisp coming up here has walked, fly to right, and grounded out to third base. Well, Lester looking on here and very interested spectator. He is responsible of all the men on here. Fouled off to the left, one and one. Donaldson at third, Fryman at second, and Perino at first with two outs. Two and one.
Swing and a miss, two and two. Now that was a surprise right there. A two one count. I think everybody in the ballpark expecting a fastball, but no, you get the split fingered fastball from Dezawa. To run the count to two and two now with the bases loaded. Chris puts it in the air to left field. Nava going back has room and will make the catch to end the inning. So Tazawa gets out of the jam. The A's leave him loaded. The Gateway City. Did you know the Cardinals righty Adam Wainwright now struck out 37 batters this season at 37 and a third innings pitch while only walking one twisted two yard iced tea is a refreshing hard iced tea that tastes like real iced tea. Be a little twisted. Well, today has been a frustrating day for John Lester. It squeezed on several pitches throughout the day, it appeared from first home plate umpire Jerry Lane and then Home plate umpire Mike Easterbrook. After Lane left the game with the injury to his thumb, it appeared, or finger. And Lester leaving the game having given up three runs in six innings. Works out to five and two thirds, really, to Zawa getting the final out of the sixth inning. And here come the Red Sox in the bottom of the sixth. Top of the order, Jacoby Ellsbury leading it off against Jerry Blevins. And that'll miss for ball one. Ellsbury, Victorino, and Pedroia here in the sixth. And we had that twisted but true fact, and uh, we had something twisted happen up in the booth today. You, uh, you received uh, something from the Mustard uh, Museum. Yes. From Wisconsin, we thank them very much. They have taken care of us on the uh, mustard request, and uh, I didn't know you were going to go there. I would have. <laughs> yeah. No background, I mean, but uh, uh, we've got the stuff, and we appreciate it very much. The Indians also sent some, so we got all kinds of mustard now for the rest of the year. We're good. I mean, I didn't. I didn't realize that they had a mustard museum. They do. It's kind of like the mustard, it's, yeah. it's a three big bottles of it, which is very nice of them. So we thank them very much. It's amazing the power of television. This is a pop up left side as Jed Lowry is there to make the catch for the first out of the inning. Ellsbury retired. Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center is the official hospital of the Boston Red Sox. Never forgets that before you're a patient, you're a person. Beth Israel Deaconess, human first. Learn more at bidmc.org slash human first. One down in the sixth inning, and Shane Victorino has grounded out, struck out, and doubled to drive in a run in the fifth inning. Yeah, 
You got must and I might get hair. You might get hair. I heard about that. That's great. <laughs> there's, there's, there's two people out of call that say they want to give me hair. That is great news. What are you going to do? It's decision time. I don't think so. I Come told, on. I told you I'm not going to buy hair. Get some hair. <laughs> I mean, if it's, I assume it's going to be free hair. Oh, that I, I don't mean, know. How that do I you don't be know. free hair? Because if you think about it, you would be their, you know, their poster child. I mean, you'd be the spokesman for whatever hair person decides to give you hair. Not I'm sure that's something I want to be involved in. Every night, talking to what, 3.5 million people a night. And there you'd be with your new hair. Yeah. When would I put it? Like right on top? Oh, I'd put some here. I'd put some there. <laughs> this is the short. Lowry fires to first and there's two down. If it's free, I'd get as much as you possibly can. I mean, I would get it everywhere. Well, they, they, I think they take it from the back of your head. Right. Put some there, some here. And I go right, I started right there. And just go all the way back. And you're coming back? And just go straight back. Yeah, right above yeah. the eyebrows. Right above the eyebrows. And, uh, you know, add some of the length. I mean, you That's, could have that. That could be yours. That even makes me look halfway decent looking. Back, back I, I find you very attractive. I mean, it's a totally different uh, look uh, than what yeah. I'm accustomed to. I mean, it changes the look of your face. It does. It, it really does. Yeah. I will see. You never know. You never know what might happen. I mean, how do you say no to free hair? Well, nobody said it was free. <laughs> Trying to hold up was Pedroia, and he did, according to Greg Gibson. And he did hold up. Did everything in his power to hold up that swing. That knee shack, the right hander up in the pen for the A's. That's a way three and one to Pedroia. Actually, the really reason you want me to get here is because you want to see what it comes out like. I, I want to see what it looks like. And then yeah, you're going to do it. it and you want to do the same. And then if you do it and it works out great, I'm right there behind you. <laughs> you a nice little bob, you know. It's a little Italian bob. Three one. He's on the ground to third base to his left. Donaldson's got it, and that'll end the inning as Blevins does a nice job of quieting the Red Sox offense. We're at three six.
Live, presented by DCU. Nesson's pregame coverage of the Sox begins an hour before every game. DCU, Digital Federal Credit Union, banking the DCU way. Seventh inning back at Fenway. Red Sox on top, 6-3. to three. More Chinichi Tozawa. Got the final out of last inning. And his first pitch of this inning misses outside. Victorino was wincing uh, in his last at bat. was in a lot of pain, it appeared. Yeah, you wonder if it's that back again that's bothering him. He's out of the ball game right now. That's a strike. So Nava goes from left to right. Victorino comes out of the game. And Mike Carp in the game now in left field. Norris late on that, and it's one and two. 93 on the fastball from Tozawa. Two and two. John Lester five and two thirds. He gives up six hits, three runs. He walked six and struck out five in today's outing. And has a chance to pick up his fourth win without a loss. Two two from Tazawa. Not close. Full count. Norris first, then Smith and Lowry expected to bat here in the visiting half of the seventh inning. Zal has not given up a walk this season in nine games, nine and two thirds. He's got a full count here. And a pop up. Dustin Pedroia will duck back to the outfield grass and take care of that number one. And he talked about no walks for Tazawa, and you know, you've got two guys in the bullpen, Uihara and Tazawa, that just don't walk people, and that's exactly what you want with guys coming out of the bullpen. Don't give guys free passes down to first base, make them earn their way on, and it's exactly what both guys have done. One down here in the seventh inning for Seth Smith. Red Sox go into the shift on the right side. They bring Will Middlebrooks over from third base. He's in the second base bottom. Pedroia ducking back to short right. For Seth Smith to pull here is. He looks at ball one. The game summary is brought to you by Xfinity from Comcast. And Anderson started for the A's, four plus innings. Anderson ends up giving up six runs and is on the hook. John Lester, five and two thirds. He gives up three runs. David Ortiz, two for three in this game. And Stephen Drew, the triple to drive in a pair of runs. That tied the game at three at the time back in the fourth inning. Smith with a swing and a foul tip. Walk a strikeout and a lineout for Smith today. His fourth plate appearance of the day. Apparently a bit high. Tazawa, one runner less in 49 Major League games. Since 2011. Broken bat, little pop up. Pedroia calling and catching out number two. And bat ended up down by Mike Napoli at first base. Two down on the broken bat pop up. Now the bat went almost as far as the baseball that time. The barrel of the bat down here, Mike Napoli, and the baseball in the glove of Dustin Pedroia. 
Really good jam that time by the fastball by Tozawa. Middlebrook's going back, but called off by Pedroia, and two quick outs here in the top of the seventh. Two down for Jed Lowry. He's got a couple of hits today. Single in the first, single in the fourth inning. Action in their pen. Ryan Cook, the right hander up in the pen. He's ready, should they call upon him? Maybe he's coming on next inning. Seeing Chris Resop and Jerry Blevins in the game in relief of Brett Anderson so far. No two to Lowry. To left center field, and this will get in. Racing over his Ellsbury, but Lowry headed to second base. Standing up with a two out double gapper out to left center field for Jed Lowry his third hit on the day two singles now the doubles split finger fastball from the and a nice job by Lowry he goes right down with it and finds that gap in left center field for the double and came into the game at 351 three for four on the afternoon getting in that cleanup spot for the athletics. Pat Nishak back up again alongside Ryan Cook. Donaldson takes ball one. Reached on a fielder's choice twice today and then doubled his last time up. Fifth batter to Zawa's face since coming into the game. He retired the first three. Right of the base hit by Jed Lowry. A double with two outs here in the seventh inning. Two zero. -oh. Swing a foul. Two and one. Two balls, no strike. Fastball right down the heart of the plate, but fouled off by Donaldson. Right down the center of the plate. The Meeker Insurance is the proud sponsor of the Amica Pig Zone. Red Sox have further action of the pen. Andrew Miller warming in the pen. Framed by Ross, but that'll miss. And Zao is behind three and one. Double by Lowry with two outs. A chance here for Donaldson. And he's ahead three and one with Brandon Moss waiting on deck. Foul back, full count. He's always been operating at 93 miles an hour that fastball. Yeah, consistently just about every fastball at 93.
in the air foul down the right field line out of play. Ross out to talk to Tozawa. Two down Lowry at second in the three two again. Donaldson to right center field and that's in for a hit. Nava plays it on a hop around from second comes Lowry he'll score. And it is an RBI single for Josh Donaldson a lengthy at bat drives in a run and it's now six to four. Red Sox on top. Yeah, good at bat by Donaldson right there. I mean he kept seeing fastballs. From uh, Tazawa finally gets one to the opposite field. Nava has to come in and play it on that in between hop. And all of a sudden, you got a two run ball game here at Fenway Park, and John Farrell making his way to the mound. So the pitching change from Fenway as Andrew Miller will make his way in. It's a two run game now. as pharmacy customers can make a donation to the one fund at locations across greater Boston through May the 4th. Two outs here in the seventh inning, 6-4 Red Sox on top of the A's. We just got a two-out RBI single by Josh Donaldson and chased his hour from the game. Andrew Miller is in for his eighth appearance, 0-1-1 with a 6.75 earned run average. Strikeouts almost equaling his walks and opponents hitting at 267. Clayton Mortensen up behind him in the bullpen as Miller in here to face Brandon Moss. Trying to get the final out of the seventh inning. Moss one for three today. Runner goes at first. Throw from Ross is going to be not in time. A stolen base for Josh Donaldson as the A's keep the pressure on here. Yeah, that came as a surprise. There's no question about that. Uh, didn't expect Donaldson to be going on the first pitch, but he takes off. Ross with a good throw to second base, but not in time. Throws a little bit high, and Donaldson gets that bag before the tag from Drew. Over the outside corner. And Miller took the loss in game two of the day night doubleheader against Kansas City, going an inning and walked two, struck out two, gave up a run with the bases loaded. And there's a lot of runs in consecutive games back to back. 
Jumps ahead here, one and two. Now if he can keep that breaking ball in that spot right there, he's probably going to have a lot of success against those left handers. That's nasty right there. Outside, two and two. Chris Young waiting on deck has already homered in this game. First to 2 2 to Moss. Ball three, full count. Jamison Coyle and Jim Hurdle will get you caught up. To the bottom of the seventh inning. Yeah, Miller getting the big strike out and uh, all fired up after getting that punch out. And receiving high fives as he makes his way back to the Red Sox dugout. Well, David Ortiz deleted off here in the home half of the seventh. Ortiz. Napoli and Nava expected in the inning. David today, two hits and three at bats, double and a single. Tried to hold up but could not. Jerry Blevins staying in the game here to deal with Ortiz. Maybe his last batter. I would say you're probably right on that, Don. There is right handed action in the bullpen. Nashak loosening up for the, what, third time today. Levinson's coming in in the fifth inning. Ty Ruperty's faced. Strikeout, three ground outs, and a fly out. And that one bounces in now. He's up to 28 total pitches. Giving him a 
just ducked into that, and it's three and one. The guy's going to jump away from that inside cut fastball. Ortiz will pop it up with the shift that is Lowry on the left side who ducks back. Actually, it is Donaldson who ducks back to make the catch. Third baseman makes the grab, and as anticipated, Jerry Blevins will be coming out of this game. So he ends up retiring. Everybody faces six batters in a row for Blevins, and back to the pen for Bob Melvin. Red Sox on top by two. the seventh Daniel Barr getting the call up last night to the Sox we asked our fans at home what kind of impact they feel he might have on the bullpens here's some of our best answers brought to you by AT&T we got this will be a boost to his confidence in the Sox winning record can provide motivation for him this will ease him back as a sixth or seventh inning type reliever still has a potential to be valuable and it's a huge impact when Breslow and Morales come back the depth will be incredible Don all right, Jane, thank you very much. As Pat Neshack checks into the game here, and it's strike one into Mike Napoli. Neshack coming in here, the former Minnesota Twin, his 10th appearance of this season without a record, a 3.86 earned run average. Opponents hitting at 313 against him. Great job by Jerry Blevins, who really quieted the Red Sox offense. As he goes two innings, giving up no hits, no runs, didn't walk anybody, and struck out a batter. Tired all six Red Sox he faced. Yeah, he certainly did a good job. He, he kept this game in check. It was gonna looking like it was gonna get out of hand for the Oakland Athletics. Red Sox are gonna run away with it, but he did a good job uh, keeping it close. Napoli with a swing and a miss strikes out. So Nishek gets him for the second out of the seventh inning. That submarine style delivery right here and the breaking ball to Napoli. It's almost rising as it goes uh, away from him. Amica Insurance is the proud sponsor of the Amica Pit Zone. Koji Uihara warming in the Red Sox pen. We've already seen Tozawa and Miller out of that pen today. After John Lester started and went the first five and two thirds. Nava looks at strike one. Pitch hit in the fifth inning for Johnny Gomes in this spot and single to right field to drive in a run. Down to the count, 0 2. Takes a little walk.
Will Middlebrooks waiting on deck. Red Sox batting here in the home half of the seventh inning. Nava on the ground and by the dive of Perino at second base. Nava's aboard for the second time in the game. Looked like Perino had that ball lined up on the dive, but I think it bounced up over his glove. Nava with good solid contact on the ground, and it looked like Perino had this one on the dive, but let's see, does it bounce over the glove? It does. And in the center field for the base hit. Base hit for Nava, so he's two for two since coming into the game. And on here with two outs as Will Middlebrook stands in and takes ball one. One and one action for the A's. Ryan Cook had been up earlier in the game, now back up again. These have used three relievers to this point for Brett Anderson, their starter, with the first four plus innings. On the ground foul, one and two. Go for three day today so far for Middlebrooks. It's popped out to second, reached on a fielder's choice, and flight out to left. In the air to center field, playable for Coco Crisp, who makes the catch that ends the inning. We're through seven from Fenway. 6 4, Red Sox on top. And Hess Express are proud sponsors of the Red Sox and the Red Sox on Nesson during the 2013 season. Hess and Hess Express will donate $500 to the pediatric trauma program at Boston Children's Hospital. For every home run hit by the Red Sox to date, $9,000 has been donated. Hess and Hess Express committed to helping the cause. The late afternoon has turned into early evening here at Fenway Park as we play along to the eighth inning. And the Red Sox move on to their fourth pitcher of the day, Koji Uihara, into his 10th game without a record of 1.17 earned run average. He's worked in seven and two thirds, nine Ks to one walk, and opponents hitting a mere 148 against Uihara. Takes over for Andrew Miller, who was able to strike out Brandon Moss with a runner in scoring position to end the seventh inning. Chris Young makes his way to the plate. 
Represents the bottom third of the Oakland A's order. Young, Fryman, and Perino scheduled to bat here in the eighth. Closer for the Oakland A's starting to warm. Grant Balfour. Balfour was in and out of that role last year and has three saves so far this season for the Athletics. Chris Young looks at ball one. Play two and one. Lester started the game five and two thirds, allowing three runs. Pitcher of record right now. Came in at three and zero oh into tonight's action. And here's a two one to Young. In the air to deep left field. Carp looking up and that ball is gone right out of Fenway solo shot for young his second home run of the day his fourth of the year and the Oakland A's are back within a run it's now six to five quite a day for young two home runs four runs batted in to go along with a walk and a stolen base and we talked about uh, Blevins earlier Keeping him in this ball game, and uh, all of a sudden you got a one-run game. Rui Hara knew it. Pinch hitter here for the A's, Josh Reddick. Pinch hitting for. Nate Fryman, who had walked twice today and flied out to center field. 164 average for Reddick in what has been a slow start to the season. Really hard falling behind 2 0. No fastball for Reddick on the 2 0 count gets the splitter from Uihara. Elevates and Reddick chasing two and two. Everything has been upstairs. Fastballs and splitter. This is inside that time full count. Eric Sogard has come out on deck to pinch hit. As Reddick strikes out for the first out of the eighth inning. Back to the split thing at fastball for Uihara to pick up the strikeout. Again, uh, about belt high, just above the belt. Everything in that at bat to Reddick was upstairs. Well, right now, Ace Ticket has special savings on all Red Sox games. Visit Ace Ticket for great seats at the lowest prices. Ace Ticket also has your seats for all of this summer's hottest concerts. Visit Ace Ticket or call 1 800 My Seats. Well, Reddick strikes out as a pinch hitter. Now, Eric Sogard is pinch hitting here for Andy Perino. Sogard got the start in last night's game at second base. And 1 0 is fouled back. Now, Grant Balfour has been joined by the left hander, Sean Doolittle. Bob Melvin with double barreled action in the pen. Sogard fouling it off. Top of the Oakland A's order, Coco Crisp on deck. Sogard pops it up foul, back and out of play.
2 2. Now it's foul back. Lead off home run to begin things here in the eighth for Chris Young, his second round tripper of the day. Strikeout of the pinch hitter Josh Reddick and now Sogard with a count of two and two and home runs three and four on the season for Young. Sogard fouling off another pitch, wasting more. Yeah, good tough at bat put on by Sogas, uh, fouling off a lot of split fingered fastballs from Uihara. We'll check swing foul. Another one. Strike three call. It took a while, but in the end, Uihara gets Sogard two down. That's one of the few pitches today that have been close that have gone for strikes. Ninth pitch of the at bat. Fastball after about four straight split finger fastballs to pick up the strikeout. Sogard didn't like it. Two down now for Coco Crisp. Base is empty here. Crisp walked back in the first inning. Only time he's been on today. Fly to right, grounded to third, fly to left. And that just misses 2 0. Oh. We are taking a little walk around the mound. One for four in his career with a double against Uihara. That's one foul as he was out ahead. That was the 22nd pitch and a new season high for Koji Uihara. Lately we started to see this bullpen get a little bit taxed, stretched out a little bit more. More than John Farrell would like. Two one. That's strike two. Yeah, Chris trying to drop one down the third baseline, trying to surprise Middlebrooks, but uh, Middlebrooks was in tight at third. In the air, down the left field line, Carp on the run, but that's going to land in the seats. And he's joined by Drew and Middlebrooks. on deck. First a bit of business here. Two balls, two strikes, and two outs. Three higher deals. And it's a fly ball to center field. Ellsbury's got plenty of room out there in center. And puts it away to end the inning. A leadoff home run for Chris Young brings the A's closer. Sox on top by one.
five lead as we head to the last half of the eighth inning. Eric Sogard, who pinch hit, stays in the game and takes over at second base. And the Oakland A's move on to their fifth pitcher of the game as Grant Balfour into the game for the A's. His eighth appearance. No record at 2.57 earned run average. This is obviously not a safe situation, but three for three in that category on the year. As the A's closer, he has five Ks to one walk and going to be dealing with eight, nine, and one in the Red Sox order. Boston's closer is up right now, Andrew Bailey. Balfour took over for Nishak, who went two thirds of an inning, giving up a hit, had a strikeout, and it'll be Drew, Ross, and Ellsbury scheduled to bat in the inning. Well, a couple of points in this inning wouldn't uh, be bad for the Red Sox at all, would it? No, it's one run game. That is 6 3 lead, but the A's getting a run in the seventh and a run in the eighth. Stephen Drew with a two run triple today back in the fourth inning and a one four three day. Center fielder Coco Crisp step or two towards right center for Drew to pull. And it's strike one over the outside corner. Drew didn't think so. Big triple back in the fourth inning to drive in a couple of runs and kind of really got the Red Sox back in this ball game and uh, got the lineup going. David Ross waiting on deck, then he get Jacoby Ellsbury to follow. Balfour with a 1 2. Strike three call. Drew Newitt takes with him the third strikeout of the day. First out here of the eighth. I want to remind you to stay with Nesson after the game for WB Mason Extra Innings Live. Tom Karen will anchor. Nesson's breakdown of game highlights, interviews, and John Farrow's post-game press conference. W.B. Mason, extra innings live. You can't go wrong when you buy right W.B. Mason. One out in the eighth, and David Ross coming up. Ross 0 for 3 from the number 9 spot. He's flat out to center, struck out, and fly to right. In the dirt, and it's one and one. Balfour last year had two stints as the A's closer, and team leading 24 save games last year. On the outside corner for strike two. Very high. Balfour had arthroscopic knee surgery during the offseason. Yeah. 
The Blue Jays two saves all of last year. But in here trying to keep it right where it's at for the Oakland A's trailing by a run. Swing and a miss strikes out Ross on a pitch who was up back to back K's two down. Yeah, both both strikeouts to Balfour in this inning coming on the fastball get Drew looking and then Ross swinging at a high fastball out of the strike zone. Well, no home runs have been hit in this game by the Red Sox, keeping their current total at 18. With Hess and Hess Express donating $500 to the pediatric trauma program at Boston Children's Hospital for every Sox home run, the 2013 total stands at 9,000. Our thanks to Hess and Hess Express, committed to helping the cause. Two outs in the eighth for Jacoby Ellsbury, and an infield hit back in the fifth inning. Looking ahead to the top of the night, Derek Norris, Seth Smith, and Jed Lowry. Two, three, and four expected for the Oakland A's. 2 0. -oh. Ellsbury sending it foul. 94 mile an hour fastball right down Broadway. Ellsbury just shaking his head. He knew he missed a good pitch to hit there on the 2 0 -oh count. Sox closer will be on. Three and one. And he struck out two in this inning. Now he walks Ellsbury. A two out base on balls. Second time Jacoby's been on today. Then it'll be Mike Carr hitting in the place of Victorino. Carr. In this situation, maybe we'll take a strike to give uh, Jacoby Ellsbury a chance to steal second base. Started and stopped on a pitch that misses for ball one. Carp taking ball two, two and oh. Now for all of a sudden having trouble throwing strikes here. A couple borderline. Non calls there too. He's been grabbing the corners here, but falling behind two and zero. Oh. Swinging a foul tip, two and one. The ball's one strike. We'll see if Ellsbury takes off here. It does not, and Carp with a swing and a miss evens a count of two and two. That was Balfour's time to the plate. What is his time? No, how? I mean, is it? Is no, it, it looks like you can get a pretty good jump against him. I know a lot of times closers, you can get a jump against. Yeah. Two, two is high. Ball three. Osbury's not tried it yet. He's a leaner. He leans in toward home plate. 
a little bit, and uh, that's your trigger to go. Ball four, he loses Carp, and the Red Sox all of a sudden have two on with two outs. Back to back walks it out by Balfour. Yeah, been a strange inning. It looked like he was going to have an easy one, two, three inning back to back strikeouts, but now back to back walks and gives Pedroia a chance with Ellsbury at second base. Justin Pedroia today. A couple of hits he doubled back in the first inning, singled in the fifth, a two for four showing. And he is three for seven in his career against Balfour. And 429 against Balfour as Red Sox certainly faced him as a member of the Oakland A's, but also as the Tampa Bay Rays in the years past. He struck out Drew, struck out Ross, but then proceeded to walk Ellsbury and Carp. And now here's Pedroia trying to grab some insurance for the Red Sox here in the last half of the eighth inning. Ball one. Looks like Dustin was taken all the way on that first pitch, too, and he gets the breaking ball. It over foul and it evens up one and one. Last outing for Balfour was on the 17th of April. So, the first time he's worked in a week. This is his longest outing of the season pitch count wise and a ground ball towards short Lowry will flip the second and it is just in time to get Carp to end the inning on the force out. We head for the ninth Sox on top by one. West Airlines, Hyundai, Kia, New England, and your New England Subaru dealers. Now the Red Sox and Oakland A's heading here into the ninth inning. And on for the Red Sox for the fourth time in five days. And as Andrew Bailey into the game, his 12th appearance, 1 0 with a 1.74 earned run average. He is four out of five in save opportunities, and obviously this is 
Opponent sitting at 139 against Bailey. He will deal with a pinch hitter first in John Jaso, who will pinch hit for Derek Norris. Norris today have been 0 for 3 with a walk, and Jaso gets it started in the ninth. Koji Uihara worked the eighth inning, gave up a run, a leadoff home run by Chris Young. Jason does not have a hit against Bailey. That's a strike one and one. Jason will be followed by Seth Smith and Jed Lowry expected here in the top half of the ninth. Popped up should get into the seats Middlebrooks will go as far as he can but no play. Pretty difficult right now too on pop ups and fly balls it's twilight. Here at Fenway Park. I mean, you've really got to keep your eye on the baseball. You look up, if you lose it, you get a little chance of picking it up again. Jaso fouls it off to the left. Bailey gets a sign ready with a 2 2 pitch. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All day long. Very tight outside. Jason fouls it off. Pitch A to the at bat coming up. Pinch hitting to start this ninth inning with Seth Smith waiting on deck. The former Oakland A, Andrew Bailey, ready with a 3 2. And a swing and a miss, strikes off Jaso. One down in the ninth. That fool Jaso on that pitch. Uh, Jaso thought he was going to get a fastball, did not get it. Got the cut fastball up and away. One down in the ninth inning, Seth Smith the batter. Red Sox into the shift on the right side as Dustin Pedroia ducks back into short right field. Middlebrooks comes to the right side of the infield. And Seth Smith takes a look at strike one. Smith walked way back in the first inning. Since then, a strikeout, a lineout, and a pop out. Quickly 0 and 2. On the ground with foul. Smith strikes out and they're two down in the ninth. Once again, back to that cut up for Bailey to pick up the strikeout. And two lefties, two cutters, 
Two outs. Two down in the ninth. And Jed Lowry coming about here. A one run contest from Fenway. Red Sox trying to grab this final game of the series. Ball one. It foul, he was out ahead. And Napoli right on that first base line, true, trying to prevent that two base hit. It's been a good day for Lowry already. Three hits in four at bats for the former Red Sox infielder. Popped up, this will get back and out of play. One ball, two strikes, two outs in the ninth. Bailey has not struck out three batters in an inning this season. Would love to do so right here. Down and in, two and two. field line this will be a foul ball Lowry thinks it's fair he is headed to second base he's not buying it there's yeah. virtually no foul ground down there at all there's going to be an argument now as Melvin comes out of the dugout Lowry thought for sure that was a fair ball down the line let's see where this landed Gee, it looked like foul territory. Maybe we can get another look. There's Lowry. He thinks it's a fair ball, and he continues on at second base. He thought it was on the line. Bailey thought it was foul. Should get a good look from this angle here. Ooh, that is very close. <laughs> Ooh. Oh. <laughs> well, it looks you, like it you, got a chunk of that line, didn't it? If you believe that dirt patch, yeah. that's a fair ball. So instead, it is two and two, and we'll do it again. Melvin back to the dugout. Oh, is that a big call? Lowry trying to shake it off here. As Bailey tries to finish off his former team. Two outs in the ninth. Two two to Lowry. Full count three and two. If we continue, Josh Donaldson will be next. Hey, stuck him out, and the Red Sox win. Bailey strikes out the side in succession, and Boston takes the series from the Oakland A's. A long fought battle here today for the Red Sox against the A's. And able to hold on after the defeat last night to Oakland and win at six to five today. They out hit the A's ten to nine.
I'd say the Red Sox got a little fortunate in that last inning. And the throw of the bat from uh, Jed Lowry after striking out. Bob's Discount Furniture again will donate $1,000 to Jimmy Fund Radio Telethon for every Sox game saved this season. With tonight's save, Bob's donation total this season stands at $8,000. Everybody saves money at Bob's Discount Furniture. Visit mybobs.com to learn more. So the Red Sox victorious. They win 6-5 to five in this one as the Red Sox take the series from the Oakland A's. And Tom Karen, this was a lot of fun here today. Red Sox win the series.